what do you see as the biggest issues in terms of policing in Calgary? Oh yeah, so good. That's a good question. Um, well, I think we're going to continue next year to be focused on uh, gun violence. I think I left uh, the discussion with both of you last year talking about the importance of uh, violence and gun violence here in the city. And so, although we've had some um, some successes in terms of driving down the number of shootings involving uh, organized crime, uh, the total number of shootings is actually higher this year than last year. In fact, I think it was, um, we had 89 last year, if I recall correctly, and I think we were at 103 by the end of November. So with another year, or sorry, another month left to go. So that's, uh, those numbers are, are uh, you know, persistently high. Um, you know, what we're seeing there, I think, is that there's some uh, lower level um, criminals and people in the city that are involved in the drug trade that are carrying guns that never used to. Um, we heard some stuff this year um, that there was individuals who said they would sooner be caught by the police with a gun than be caught with, by their rivals without one. So that's, that's not good. That sort of tells you some of the competition that, that was out on the street this year, probably with some restrictions around the, the flow of drugs. So as a result of that, certainly uh, violent crime and homicides too. Like if you look at our homicides, I think we're at 29 right now. And that's high for us as well, um, you know, with a couple of weeks left to go. And so, yeah, so violent crime has been up uh, here during the pandemic. So we've got to keep focused on that in uh, the next year. And then, uh, you know, I, I am concerned about the mental health um, hangover of the pandemic whenever it ends. Um, you know, we're feeling all now like there's a light at the end of the tunnel, but the reality of it is it will be a while. COVID-19 will still be with us for a while into 2021. Compared to previous years on the opioid file, what has been the experience this year? Obviously, we've seen um, Alberta-wide, like the numbers are still going up. I think for the second quarter of the year, um, opioid-related deaths even outpaced COVID-19-related deaths. So it's clearly a massive issue. What are you seeing in Calgary specifically when it comes to that compared to past years and how are you combating it? Yeah, we've seen the increase. I mean, primarily that's a health problem. Um, obviously, we'll help out any way we can, but I think it's been very difficult for people who've been struggling with uh, addictions um, in 2020. Not only has it been a really tough year in terms of you know certainty around jobs and, and general anxiety and that sort of thing, but people who are um, struggling with addictions haven't been able to necessarily access the services that they would ordinarily access the same way because um, those services have had to sort of thin out employees and, and in some cases shut down and at times not be available. So I think that's been a very, very difficult year for people who've been battling addictions. And as a result, I think uh, we've seen some records, I think, in I think you referred to the second quarter. I think if, if I remember the second quarter was probably the highest number um, that we've seen. And I think we've seen deaths as high as two and a half a day. You mentioned that, you know, you're okay with having a conversation about defining police, but when it comes to actually defunding, that's not something, that's not a movement that you kind of stand shoulder to shoulder with. You know, mem members of council have referred to that movement as extremists. Is, is that something that you would agree with or where do you fall when it comes to your view on the defund the police movement and what it means what they're trying to achieve well i you know what i definitely wouldn't uh characterize them as extremists but i think that comes from a place of having reached out and having met uh, a number of people and having uh, engaged and spoke with them and so they didn't come across as anything but very reasonable people to me i suspect though there are people in the group that we weren't able to speak with because their, um, you know, their sort of position was they would just like to abolish the police. And so they don't want to have any discussions about how we improve things because that's not really part of their agenda. So some of those people might hold really extreme views. Um, that may be the case, but certainly the folks that I've talked to are actually smart. Uh, they're intelligent and a lot of them are not even actually um, fundamentally against the police. Some of them just talk about the fact that they think that we've, we as a society have come to rely on police, you know, very heavily. And in some cases for things we ought not to, and for the sole reason that they're available after four at night and on the weekends. And so I've heard some really thoughtful dialogue. And the other side of it, of course, is when we're having those discussions, they're beginning to understand some things about how the Calgary Police Service runs and how some of the, some of the challenges that we face as well. And so I think it's been a productive dialogue. Um, with people, so I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, characterize them as uh, extremists at all. Things. There's a number of um, of chiefs across the country here, and I'm of course one of them, who has a strong belief in sort of a law enforcement public health intersection, and that and that we're not necessarily doing a great job when we go uh, to some of these um, um, calls 
after hours, we're not able to bring what people need. Uh, and, and then the people aren't getting connected to the services necessarily that they really need um, once the businesses open up again in the morning. And so it's frustrating for our members to continue to go, you know, to the same places and deal with some of the same people around some of the same issues and then not be able to achieve any different outcomes. So my hope uh, with this and the hope of many in the organization that are that are having interest in this is that we're going to be able to divert some of that demand um, over to the people that can actually provide um uh, more of a long-term um, solution to some of the issues and make sure that people are supported. And, and the hope would be that people wouldn't fall into crisis needing the police. I mean, hey, there's always going to be a role for police to respond to individuals who are uh, in crisis. And when there's a public safety issue or, um, or any sort of a safety issue, it's going to end up being the police that are going to go. But anything short of that, uh, I think it's worth looking at and say, hey, do the police need to be the first um, line of defense or the first response to um, these calls? Or is there other opportunities? And I think uh, that's exactly the type of work we're going to do as we go into 2021 is going to help uh, clear some of that up.